So this is uh, actually a Honduras rosewood back in the making. Um, and the first thing, you know, you, as a maker you can kind of tell what the tone's going to be uh, when you're touching it because you, there's a certain tonality as your fingers touch the wood that, that, um, that give you an idea of the promise. Sometimes there's a very high frequency um, clarity about it that gives great promise. Other times the sound can be a little bit lower and dull as your fingers touch it. This really helps, you know, as a maker because you, you have to know how to thickness it, what thickness to make it uh, to get the best out of it. And um, it just comes with, ex with experience, but as you touch it and tap it as well, you know, you get an idea. Um, I'm not listening for a note. What I'm listening for is the tonality of it. Uh, and I'm looking for bell-like clear tones which help, which help quite a bit. This is Honduras Rosewood. Very powerful, very warm, very clear at the same time. The next one that I have here is actually what's going to be uh, a Cocobolo um, back for an F model. First thing I notice when I lift it up is it's quite it's quite heavy. So the guitar, a Cocobolo guitar, is a heavy guitar in general. And you'll get plenty of power again, rather like Honduras Rosewood, but maybe a little bit fuller, but not quite as clear. So you can hear the top tone is not quite as clear, but very full. So much duller than the Honduras Rosewood. I think that between Honduras Rosewood and Cocobolo, um, if you want to be able to play hard and play aggressively at times, then Honduras Rosewood or Cocobolo would be a very good choice. Uh, the Cocobolo is arguably slightly heavier in sound, slightly meatier, uh, whereas the Honduras Rosewood maybe has a touch more touch more clarity without having the meat to quite the same extent. It's difficult to use words but in the end of the day when you go into a shop and you pick up um, various Loudon guitars and try them out, the one that speaks to you most as you play it is the one that you should choose. But I'm trying to give you a, a head start in that choice by understanding what different woods do. The next wood that I discovered um, as I went along on my journey was this rather beautiful uh, Zirocote uh, which uh, comes from Central America. Again quite a heavy wood, very similar in tone to Honduras rosewood again. It's, it is a heavy rosewood but it's beautiful uh, to look at tone wise uh, especially if you put it with a cedar top as in the Richard Thompson model, um, you get incredible volume, incredible power uh, with a cedar top. So if you want fantastic looks, uh, but also a very strong, powerful sound, think about Zeracote with cedar. Great choice. This is another example of a, a, um, a Honduras rosewood back. You can see it's a little bit red in colour, um, but Again, hard, dense. From my perspective, when you're close up, you can hear the high overtones coming through. So that gives good promise for clarity as well. And this is um, an African blackwood back, even heavier still. This one has um, some sapwood in the middle. And some people really like that from the visual point of view. Very, very meaty, but very, very clear. Maybe, maybe the best combination of clarity and fullness that you can get from African blackwood. It's rather rare, so it is very expensive, um, but exceptional. One of my all-time favorites, uh, this is Hawaiian koa. Uh, Hawaiian koa is much lighter in weight. So that means that 
if you want to play sensitively, if you like to play gently as well, and so if you like to finger pick a lot, um, koa is a very good choice, um, especially if you put it with a cedar top uh, or a redwood top or an alpine spruce top. You get that, it gives you the ability to express yourself and have lots of different nuances of tone. Um, maybe not quite as strong as, say, some of the other heavier woods like Cocobolo, Honduras rosewood, African blackwood, Zeracote, but looks visually be be beautiful, but will give you the ability to be very sensitive and it will still respond. Just touch the guitar, it'll still respond. So here I have a, an alpine spruce top. Um, alpine spruce has been used for centuries um, for violin making uh, and, for, and even for guitar making. And it's usually, the best pieces are grown usually 1200 meters, 1400 meters up in the Alps where the growth rate is quite slow and the growth season is quite short. Um, and this tends to produce wood which is lightweight and stiff, which means uh, the guitar is liable to stand the test of time, but at the same time be very responsive. So if I use tap tone is a little bit um, fuller, not quite so vibrant and fast as with the cedar, um, but it means that you can play um, lots of different, you can have lots of different nuances of tone and the way a classical player likes to use uh, his or her right hand a lot to produce different tones. This is really the ideal wood for um, a steel string or a classical player for that purpose. Someone who really wants to be expressive and um, the guitar will answer. Fat tones, warm tones, bright tones, all of those you can get with, uh, with alpine spruce, one of my favorite woods, even for steel strings. So the next um, soundboard wood is, of course, the old favorite, Sitka spruce. Maybe the most used of all soundboard woods for steel string guitars. It has, you know, Sitka spruce is used or was used quite a lot in building aircraft because of its light weight and its uh, ratio of weight to strength and stiffness. So. That also means that it's almost certainly going to be good for tone and therefore it's no surprise that it was used and still is used um, the most today for steel string guitars. So Sitka Spruce gives you clarity and brightness. Um, it's maybe not as uh, exciting a wood from the tone point of view as some of the others, but gives you the ability to play in so many different styles and it will still respond, it won't overdrive the way cedar can sometimes if you play it too hard. Very stiff, very good from, from that point of view. In recent times I came across Adirondack and started to use it. Adirondack even stiffer than Sitka spruce, um, but it has, even when you're touching it, it has this kind of, um, it's very loud when you touch it, you can feel the, the friction in your fingers, um, which I always listen for. And you can hear right away, you can hear the deep lows, you can hear the, the highs and the mids all coming through. Of course, your ear would have to be where mine is, but still, this is um, Adirondack is one of those woods that takes some time to come out in an acoustic guitar, but Again, you can do whatever you want on it and it will respond. Not as sensitive as cedar, um, not as good and as quick a response as cedar has for playing delicately. But if you're going to play a variety of styles, you want to be able to finger pick, you want to be able to flat pick, um, you want to be able to strum, then it's very hard to get past Adirondack. Last but not least, there's California Redwood, my favorite perhaps of all. Looks beautiful, quite light, very, very stiff, um, which, which is one of the reasons why it sustains so well. Um, it has everything, warmth, 
clarity and depth and really what you've got to do after I've explained about all those wonderful tone woods is just go into a shop, try and find as many as you can, pick them up and play them and you will know because of your playing style very quickly which one really speaks to you and you'll also know which ones don't speak to you as much. So really the proof of the pudding is in the playing in this case.